Happy Friday! We are on our way to the hotel. Just loaded in for the show at Clover. So I thought I would do um, like a super quick just chat from the hotel. And I'm just sitting here looking out the window and trying to relax for a minute. Um, so far, I didn't do any video when I was setting up because I was kind of too hurried. I can do that tomorrow morning when I go back over. Basically, I'm here for two days doing Clover Market and my husband and I have an anniversary next weekend. So for our 22 year anniversary, we figured we would stay in the city and of making a mini family vacation to kick off the holidays out of this and I'm walk around, around Dilworth Park and see the ice skating and look at the other shops, kind of support other vendors that are out here in the cold and it's a little rainy right now. Um, I love being in the city. I went to college in Philadelphia, not um, right in downtown, but um, at St. Joe's. And I've, I've always really loved um, the city of Philadelphia. So, I'm ha you know, I'm really happy that both of my, my boys are here going to school just up the road and can walk down. And it was like a godsend having my son Ben here today because my parking was like all messed up. I had prepaid it. I had never done that before. I thought it was kind of making my life a little easier. And the scan didn't work. I ended up driving all over the place and then it took me forever to get back. By the time I got back, he had actually gone in and found my stuff I had dumped off from the freight elevator and set it up for me. So that was so nice. But it has been quite a long day, a long week really. It's um, just a really busy season for small business and I feel really grateful that I've been able to, um, to do really well this year. It's really the first year I've felt that my business is actually sustaining me and growing and doing what I want it to do. So all good stuff, right? So I'm going to give you one quick glimpse out. In it's so busy out and it's starting to rain and I am already exhausted from just trying to get in here and get situated. But the hotel's nice. I have a few hours to go. I'm not the hotel. I want to, you know, get out see Christmas in the city. today at Clover so I'm kind of leaning into one of my favorite things is to just wander around the city by myself and look for cool stores stuff and coffee shops that kind of a thing so I've had a lot of time to do that and I can leave early um, before the show and kind of get up and walk around a little bit which has been really fun for me anyway um, my family my two boys are, are at school but they've been coming down and hanging out with us so I'm gonna see which one I can rope into helping me um, kind of break down everything tonight before I leave and my husband and youngest will be leaving soon did really well yesterday I'm actually so happy with that that today I'm just going in with kind of no expectations and happy with you know and grateful for whatever happens today so I'm gonna go in a little bit early today so I can kind of walk around and actually chat with some of the other vendors that are there so I can get a chance to do that and I'll check in soon. down 10 tips yesterday while I was at the show and thinking of them that I thought I would share. Tip number one, um, you want to get out there and see what shows are really all about. So if you're in the process of choosing shows, 
you want to choose, um, you know, shows that you've heard good things about. Maybe go buy some vendor tips, some friends um, that you know. You need to get out there and see what shows are actually going to work for you as opposed to what people think um, will work for you. It really depends on the audience. So one vendor, a friend of mine said, you know, do this show, but she sells clothing. So it might be a different audience than my customer who is buying like boutique, like luxury soap, handmade soap. Tip number two is to use a show, use the show as a, an opportunity then to get to know your audience. So I can literally spot at this point by doing so many shows as people walk by my booth or my table, I can, I can literally say to myself, okay, that person's going to stop and buy something. It's like I can pick out my customer. It's just something that I know now. I know who my customer is and that's such an important thing. You know, people say, make sure you get to know your customer and who you know, know who your customer is when you start selling. You can actually, you know, try to guess who that person is and you think you know, but sometimes you don't know until you're out there actually interacting with them and getting to know them a little bit. So you want to use shows as an opportunity to really get to know who your customers are and who is likely to buy because then you can design things um, from your products to your booth setup to your branding and everything going forward based on that. Tip number three, um, if you like the show, don't necessarily say, okay, this seemed to be pretty successful. I don't know if I should do it, if it's worth doing next year. If it seemed to be a pretty decent show and you had some, a couple even of very good customers, try it again. And the reason I say this is because some of my most successful shows now are based on, I've seen them grow and grow and grow every year in terms of what I consider a success, right? Whether that's financial or the amount of people who are coming to talk to me, that kind of thing. Um, really what has happened over the years is I have begun to build this new customer base in this one particular area. So they're on my email list, but they also come to find me at shows now. And that alone creates a very successful show. And then every year I'm also building new customers who then come back and find me. Tip number four is to, um, when you are at the show, stand up and actually talk to people. Don't sit and text on your phone and scroll through pictures or Facebook or whatever. Um, when I leave a show, my feet are aching. I'm so tired. The end, It's literally like, I feel like I'm really drained, like my energy is drained. And the reason is um, because I'm interacting with people all day. So I'm not necessarily, I feel like I'm not doing anything sometimes, but I actually am doing a lot and interacting with my customers and I'm standing on my feet and you should feel that sense of exhaustion. People want to, to see you and they want to talk to you and you don't need to sit and, and chat incessantly, right, with your customers. People are trying to buy, give them their space. But what I like to do is just say, hey, if you have any questions, let me know. I make everything. These are the key ingredients and enjoy. Tip number five is to use pretty packaging and I don't just mean the packaging that you are using for your branding. Although since I have switched to my soapboxes, I don't have any in front of me right now. It's all up the street. Um, I have designed boxes that I have printed and people stop because it, they love the pretty boxes and then the soap inside, I know the soap inside is wonderful, they know it once they use it, but they love the, the packaging and that makes it the perfect gift as well. But what I'm also referring to is the shopping bags that I use. So my branding is um, a little bit of teal and sage green, you know, different shades of green with a touch or a really pretty bright blue and then I'll do a couple of different uh, pieces of tissue inside with the greens and the blues and then I have my logo printed in white and black on the front of it. So this way I'm kind of giving them the gift already prepped to go for the holidays. Also, these bright blue bags are walking all over the event now and my logo is right there on the front. So people see that if they see a number of these bags, they're going to say, all right, you know, this is obviously popular. I wanna go see where these are coming from. They're walking by, they see my bag sitting on my table and they stop if they're soap shoppers, right? But it works. Okay, tip number six is to put out samples. So I sell Bath & Body, I have handmade soaps and shea butter creams. I always have samples of the shea butter creams out. Um, you can smell the soap through the boxes that I use. Um, perfume oils I, are very popular at the shows, so I always have a tester out in front. Tip number, six. Tip number seven, sorry, is to um, look for the connections that you're going to make. So it's not all just about sales and getting to know your customers. You also want to get to know the person next to you, get to know other vendors. I've, I've met some wonderful women and um, many of whom I do consider friends now just by going to events. I also end up having something, it's always without fail and it's been years now, one thing happens at every event even if I'm not making a lot of sales where I make some kind of a really cool connection with somebody that leads to another opportunity. Generally what happens is I gain a new wholesale shop. Or at the last event, I um, had a sales rep come and find me, and she's one. So I have a sales rep now.
from that show, which was a wonderful show all around. So um, I've already made some cool connections through other vendors today, and I have a whole other day to, to see what happens. Tip number eight is to give yourself plenty of time. So um, when you're setting up, you don't want to be rushed. I get anxiety. I'm an anxious person anyway. I've had anxiety since I was a kid. The last thing I want is to be running into the city full speed ahead, whether I'm driving or whatever I'm doing, trying to get there on time to unload a lot of heavy merchandise and get it set up in time. Just leave really early. Give yourself time. Um, I actually came into the city the night before, set up and stayed here and made it a family vacation. So any way you can like alleviate some of that stress and um, have the time that you need to set up, that will help you enjoy your show more. Another thing is getting organized beforehand. It starts the week before the event. I am making a list of what I need. I have printouts of uh, my inventory so I know what I'm planning to bring. I'm checking it off as I pack it and I'm putting things in bins as I go all week so I don't feel that level of stress. And I'm very, very organized and methodical about the way I do it. Use bins, label them so you know what's there. Organization beforehand and give yourself time that morning or even the night before if you can. Tip number nine is to um, use this as an opportunity to grow your customer base all year. By that I mean um, grow your email list. Many people don't see the value of growing the, their email list, but I realized early on that I needed to grow my email uh, list in order to maintain communication with my customers. Every month I send out one email that has information on new products, on shows. Um, it'll have usually some kind of DIY or skincare tip based on maybe one ingredient that I use. So it's useful to them and a lot of different to get their sale of the month email, which is super short and it gives them a discount code and it gives them the reveal of the giveaway. I do a giveaway for my VIP customers on my email list every single month and I and people just sign up. So it's a wonderful way to grow your list based on people actually seeing you, meeting you and um, actually getting to know your products a little bit beforehand. So you're doing the last tip. Number 10 is to have fun. Um, keep the positive energy going. So this is all, I really believe everything's about energy. If, you put you get what you get back what you put out there right so go there with gratitude in your mind that you're um, excited to be there that you feel grateful to be there that any sale that you have you are grateful to that customer for choosing you to trust with their gift giving with their skincare with whatever it happens to be that you're selling so feel positive energy feel gratitude you want to go and my rule is i'm always going to go and support one other vendor so another reason i'm going early today is not just to chat and talk to other vendors but i'm going to buy something from someone because i like to put that vibe out there i would support another vendor on my way this morning so you want to have that positive vibe positive energy and that sense of gratitude and what you get back will be tenfold from that. So don't go with expectations for yourself. Go with what, what can you do to help somebody else today? And I guarantee you'll have a successful day too. And just have fun and enjoy it. Like I consider it a day out, even though it's, you know, it's work. It's not really work. I love what I do. Okay, and that's it. So if you are selling this year, um, hopefully these tips will help you. And if you have any questions for me, go ahead and drop them in the comments and I'll jump on and, and answer them too. So have a great weekend and have a wonderful 2019 of sales and successful events. Talk to you later.